to Regaining the Balance. I'm Matt, your host for this channel. Um, I wanted to do a primary video here on the problems of historical chronology, and I'm going to be reading out of Anatolia Flaminka's History, Fiction, or Science, uh, Volume 1. And this is his first chapter. So, just to give you guys an idea of basically what our current historical chronology is, for those of you that don't know, um, I just wanted to do a video and uh, read and tell you what this man has put together and what he's found out and uh, share it with you guys. So in our continuing videos, you'll understand the sort of mindset where I will be researching history through this sort of a lens. I don't agree with lots of stuff that Fomenko says, but then again, a lot of things he says are just um, theories, and he says it himself. So either way, um, take it as it is. <laughs> but uh, here we go. So Roman chronology is the foundation of European chronology. Let us give a concise preliminary account of the current state of ancient and medieval chronology. The importance of chronology for historical science is all the greater since this, this discipline allows for the determination of the time interval between the historical events and the current era, provided it can be adequately translated into terms of contemporary chronology. That is to say, it is given a corresponding B.C. A.D. dating. Nearly all the fundamental historical conclusions depend on the dating of the events as described in the source that is being studied. An altered or an imprecise dating of an event defines it, its entire interpretation and evaluation. The current global chronology model has evolved owing to the labor of several generations of chronologists of the 17th and 19th century and has Julian calendar datings described to all the major events of ancient history. The datings of events referred to in some freshly discovered document are predominantly based on the Roman chronology since it is considered that, quote, all the other ancient chronolo chronological datings can be linked to our calendar via direct or indirect synchronisms with the Roman dates, unquote. In other words, Roman chronology and history are the, quote, spinal column, unquote, of the consensual global chronology and the history, and history. This is why Roman history shall have to enjoy our very special attention. And now we're coming to our famous, our very famous chronologers, um, Scaliger, Patavius, and other clerical chronologers, the creation of contemporary chronology of the ancient times in the 16th and 17th century A.D., the chronology of ancient and medieval history in its present form was created and, for the most part, concluded in a series of fundamental works of the 16th and 17th century that begin with the writings of Josephus Justus Scaliger, Scaliger, 1540-1609, called the, quote, founder of modern chronology as science, unquote, by the modern chronologist E. Bickerman. The medieval portrait of Scaliger can be seen above, and it is an etching from the Athene Batavia, uh, and da, da, da. His principal works are Opus Novum de um, Amendatione Temporum and Thesaurium Temporum. For the most part, the body of Scaliger's work was concluded by Dionysius Patavius, 1583-1652. The best-known book of the latter is titled La Doctrina Temporum, and shows. And then this image shows the uh, front page of his Rationarium Temporum, published in 1652. And uh, let's see here, Richard Friedrich Miller, 1705 to 1783, quote, unquote, revised the Russian history and chronology of this 18th century in accordance with Scaliger's scheme. His portrait can be seen on the next page. Let us mention that the works of the 18th to 19th century, which contain a great array of factual chronological data, and he lists a few points here, are, they are of great value to us since they provide a snapshot of the state of chronology during the epoch of greater proximity to Scaliger and Patavius. This material is thus of a more primordial nature, not, quote, painted over, unquote, by later cosmetic layers. It must be noted that this series remains incomplete as well as several other similar chronological works. To quote the prominent contemporary chronologist E. Bickerman, quote, there has been no chronological research ever conducted that could be called exhaustive and conforming to the modern standards, unquote. I think that's a great point. Hence, it would be correct to call the modern conceptual chronology of the classical period and the Middle Ages the scaliger patavius version, as we shall simply refer to it as Scaligerian chronology, and so will I during all the videos following. As it will be pointed out, this version wasn't the only existing in the 17th and 18th century. Its veracity has been questioned by eminent scientists. 
The ground-laying works of Scaliger and Petavius of the 16th and 17th century represent the ancient chronology as a table of dates given without any reason whatsoever. It is declared to have been on the ecclesiastical tradition. This is hardly surprising since, quote, history has remained predominantly ecclesial for centuries and for the most part was written by the clergy, unquote. Today it is believed that the foundation of chronology were laid by Eusebius, Pamphilus, and St. Hieronymus, allegedly in the 4th century A.D. And uh, here, over here, we see these two pictures of both Eusebius and Hieronymus, otherwise known as Jerome. And uh, it is worth noting that Eusebius of Caesarea is painted wearing a typically medieval attire of the Renaissance epoch, most probably because he had lived in that period of time and not any earlier Despite the fact that Scaligerian history describes Eusebius to the 4th century AD during the 260 to 340 years, it is interesting to note that his famous work titled The History of Time from Genesis to the Nicene Council, the so-called Chronicle, as well as the tractate by St. Hieronymus, Jerome, weren't discovered until the very late in the Middle Ages. Apart from that, historians say that the, quote, gr the Greek original, unquote, of Eusebius is only available in fragmentary form nowadays and is compl complemented by the ad libitum translation made by St. Hieronymus. Mark the fact that the Nicephorus Callistus attempted to write the new history of the first three centuries of the 14th century, in the 14th century, or quote-unquote revised the history of Eusebius, but quote, he could not do more than repeat that which was written by Eusebius, unquote. However, since the work of Eusebius was only published in 1544, that is much later than the writing of Nicephorus, one has, to one, one has reason to wonder, could the, quote, ancient, unquote, Eusebius have based his work on the medieval tractate by Nicephorus Callistus? We can see a painting by Cesar Nebbia and Giuliani Guerra that was allegedly created in 1585 to 1590. According to historians, it depicts a scene of St. Jerome and his pet lion visiting the library of Eusebius in Caesarea. What we see here, however, is a typical, typically medieval scene of the Renaissance epoch, or maybe even the epoch of the 16th and 17th century. The library shelves are filled with books that look basically the same as those of the 18th and 19th century. It is in hard covers with wide fastening straps. The artists of the 16th and 17th century have most probably painted recent medieval events and characters cast into the quote-unquote Dark Ages by later 17th and 18th century chronologists of the Scaligarian tradition. It is assumed that Scaligarian chronology was based on the interpretation of assorted numeric data collected from the Bible. Certain, quote, basis dates, unquote, that were used as reference points originated as results of scholastic exercises with numbers. For instance, according to the eminent chronologist Usher, Userius, the world was created on Sunday, October 23rd, 4004 BC, in the small hours of the morning. Mind-boggling precision. One is... To bear in mind that the secular, quote-unquote secular, chronology of the present day is largely based on the scholastic biblical chronology of the Middle Ages. E. Bickerman, a contemporary historian, is perfectly right to note that the, Christ, the quote, Christian historians have made secular chronology chronography serve ecclesial history. The compilation made by Hieronymus is the foundation of the entire edifice of the occidental chronological knowledge, unquote. Though, though, quote, Scaliger, the founding father of modern chronology as a science, had attempted to re reconstruct the entire tractate of Eusebius, unquote, Bickerman tells us, quote, the datings of Eusebius that often got transcribed erroneously in manuscripts are hardly of any use to us nowadays, unquote. Due to the contro controversy and the dubiety of these medieval computations, the, gen the quote, Genesis dating, unquote, for instance, varies greatly from document to document. And I'm not going to read these, but if you, you know, I'm just going to keep this on the screen. So if you guys want to take a look at it, it's from, you know, anywhere between 55, 59, 69 to 3,491. <laughs> so as we can see, this temporal reference point considers fundamental for the of ancient chronology fluctuates within the span of 2,100 years. We have only quoted the most famous examples here. It is expedient to know that there are about 200 various versions of the, quote, Genesis date, unquote, in existence. In the picture to the right, you can see an ancient painting of the 70 Bible translators commonly referred to as, quote, the 70 interpreters, unquote, today. The, quote, original Genesis dating, unquote, issues far, was far from scholastic and received plenty of attention in the 17th and 18th century for good reason. 
The matter here is that many ancient documents date, date events in years past since Adam or since the Genesis. This is why the existing millenarian discrepancies between the possible choices of this reference point substantially affect the datings of many ancient documents. Scaliger, together with Patavius, were the first ones to have used the astronomical method for proving but not examining critically the late medieval versions of chronology of the preceding centuries. Modern commentators consider Scaliger to have just ipso facto transformed the chronology into, quote, scientific, unquote, one. The scientific veneer proved sufficient for the chronologists of the 17th and 18th century to put an unquestioning trust in the largely rigidified chronological date grid that they had inherited. It is very significant that Scaligarian chronology was initially created with the paradigm of the Western European Catholic Church, which had remained in its firm control for a great amount of time. A. Olienkov wrote, quote, The medieval theologians often tried to calculate the age of the earth, interpreting assorted data containing in the Holy Writ, unquote. On having studied the text of the Bible, Archbishop Hieronymus came to the conclusion that the world was created 3,941 years before beginning of the modern chronology. His colleague Theophilus, the bishop of Antioch, Antiochia, had extended this period to 5,515 years. St. Augustine had added another 36 years, while the Irish archbishop, archbishop named Usher, who had previously nurtured a fondness for precise numbers, had made the assumption that the world was created in the early morning hours of 23rd October 4004 B.C., many eminent Western European chronologists of the 16th and 17th century were clergymen. Scaliger, 1540-1609, for instance, was the theologian. Tischendorf, 1815-1874, the founding father of paleography, was doctor of divinity. Dionysus Patavius, 1583-1652, a Jesuit and author of several theological works. Their absolute trust in the infallibility of what the ecclesial chronology was telling them determined their entire Watschen Weltanschung. Therefore, their attitude to the data offered by other disciplines was determined by whether or not it could serve the advocacy of this as a of this a priori assumption of the, or the other, invariably based on the medieval ecclesial chronology that was later baptized as scientific. The fact that clerical chronologists of the Occidental Church had deified the endeavors of their predecessors of the 15th and 16th century excluded the very possibility of criticizing the foundations of chronology in any way at all, even minutely. Scaliger, for instance, could not even conceive of such heresy as running a check on the chronological materials of the Holy Fathers, Eusebius and others. Scaliger calls his work by Eusebius, the evangelical preparation, divine, Trusting the authority of their predecessors unconditionally, the chronologists created a at external criticisms. Oh, excuse me. Trusting the authority of their predecessors unconditionally, the chronologists reacted at external criticism very bitterly. The same Scal- Scaliger makes a perfect demonstration of his attitude towards objective scientific criticism in the following episode. Quote: The eminent philologist Joseph de Scaliger the author of the chronology that has received such high scientific acclaim turned into a keen quadraturist, unquote. Let us remind that a quadraturist was someone who tried to build a square equaling a given circle, disc, in an area, using nothing but a pair of compass and a, uh, a pair of compass and a ruler. This mathematical problem is insoluble as a principle, which is proven by geometry. However, Scaliger had published a book where he claims to have proved the, quote, true quadrature, unquote, with, which solved the problem. The best mathematicians of the epoch, Viete, Clavius, have tried their hardest to prove he, to him that his reasoning was incorrect, all in vain. The point here is that Scaliger's erroneous proof made the, made the easy co- corollary about the perimeter of an equilateral polygon with 196 angles being greater than that of the circle subscribing it, which is naturally quite absurd. Nevertheless, Scaliger and his supporters, who had a habit of defending their opinions vehemently, didn't want to acknowledge anything, replying with mal- t- maledictions and scornful epithets, and finally calling all geometry, geometry, geometricians... <laughs> complete ignoramuses in what concerned geometry. One might, one might imagine how these people reacted towards attempts of analyzing their versions of chronology critically. For few are aware that Scaliger and Patavius brought chronology to quote-unquote perfection, 
and, quote, absolute precise datings, unquote, quoting the year, day, month, and sometimes even the time of day for all the principal events in the history of humankind. For whatever reason, modern monog monographies and textbooks usually only quote the years of events according to Scaliger Batavius. Coyly omitting the month, day, hour, it is very, it is a verily, it is verily a step backwards that deprives the chronology calculated in the 17th and 18th century of its former splendor and fundamentality. By the 19th century, the accumulated volume of chronological material had grown to the extent of inducing respect by a priori, respect a priori by its sheer scale to the chronologists of the 19th century saw their objective in making minor corrections and not much else. The issue of veracity is hardly raised at all in the 20th century, and the ancient chronological solidifies terminally in the very shape and form given to it by the writings of Eusebius, Hieronymus, Theophilus, Augustine, Hippolytus, and St. Clement of Alexandria, Usher, Scaliger, and Patavius. To someone in our day and age, the very thought that historians have followed an erroneous chronology for about three centuries seems preposterous, since it contradicts the existing tradition. However, as chronology developed, specialists encountered considerable difficulties in trying to correlate the varied chronological data offered by the ancient sources with the consensual Scaligarian version. It was discovered, for instance, that Hieronymus misdated his own time by a hundred years. The so-called Sassanid tradition separated Alexander the Great from the Sassanids by an interval of 226 years, which extended to 557 by contemporary historians. In this case, the gap exceeds 300 years. The Jews also allocate a mere 52 years for the Persian period of their history, despite the fact that Cyrus II is separated from Alexander the Great by 206 years, according to the Scaligarian chronology. This basic Egyptian chronology the basic Egyptian chronology has also reached us through the filter of Christian chronologists. Quote, the list of kings compiled by Menathon only survived as quotations made by the Christian authors. Some readers might be unaware that the, quote, Oriental Church avoided using the birth of Christ as a chronological point of reference since in Constant Constantinople, the debates about the date of his birth had continued well into the 16th, or sorry, the 14th century. All right, well, that's where I'm going to wrap it up for now. And I think um, I think that's a good uh, jump-off point for all of you who have never really got into this. You, I would suggest that if you've never read this book, you should probably check it out. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and list a... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to a few videos that are just like Russian documentaries about Flamenco and how he came to do to start this project this new chronology project because he's a mathematician um by profession and uh it's very interesting how he sort of fell into this he solved the problem um that uh, uh regarding um the ancient eclipses and being able to uh, uh mathematically predict and know when eclipses lunar and solar would happen and uh and and then solving this problem he discovered the big gap in history which um i think if you guys are interested it's definitely worth well worth the watch uh, plus it'll also give you some basic stuff which i won't necessarily go into but i would definitely suggest checking it out things like um previous datings where you will find a j or an i in front of a date so instead of 1552 it's actually going to be j5 five two or i five five two and things of that nature so uh, thank you for joining me please like the video if you enjoyed it and um, please subscribe and hit the little bell button and um, come back uh, for our you know following videos and where we will be doing our own specific investigations using um as many sources from the 14th, 13th, 12th, 15th century as we can. And there's, I got a couple of very exciting videos regarding uh, poking major holes in uh, the chronology and, um, you know, using his method of uh, parallelism, which I think I will do, my next video will be probably on the parallelism itself. So, 
um, just to give you guys an idea of just how history is just stacked on top of itself over and over and over again. Um, it's very interesting. So um, until the next time, thank you for joining me. Have a great day. Mm-hmm.